Alien entities, what are they? What does that mean? In this series of teachings, Dr. Lester Summerall talks about the spiritual aspects of people with multiple personalities and those plagued with clinical depression. He also shares how the church should have the answers to any human problem, including alien entities. Stay tuned for this fascinating series that teaches people how Jesus Christ can set people free. It is a joy to uh, speak to you about things that are real and things that pertain to life. Uh, I don't normally make this confession, uh, not very often. I, I have suffered more as a person uh, from teaching what you're hearing than I have for everything else in my life put together. Uh, as I grew up in a very fundamental group, they never taught you about the devil. They made fun of the devil. They called him Slewfoot. And I discovered when I began to meditate in this that when you did that, you canceled out your rights to hurt him. That he doesn't have to move for you if you ridicule him. He is a prince. And you'll find in the little book of Jude that Michael, who is an archangel, and Satan had a tremendous controversy over the bones of Moses. It's amazing how you can get bits of truth in, in, in the Word of God. And Moses died, and the devil will even fight over dry bones. Now, now anybody will fight over dry bones, what will they do for a living bone, like your bone? And, and, and that they had a controversy over it, and the Bible says that even though he was Michael the archangel, that he dare not bring reeling accusation against him, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. And, and I don't appreciate people trying to tell funny jokes about the devil. And I don't appreciate people saying that he has two horns and a tail. He is an angel of light and so deceptive until it takes a spiritual person to know where he's functioning and when he's functioning. But when I went to the mission field, what we call the mission field, when I went to the Orient, and beginning in Indonesia, and then on into Hong Kong, in the Philippines, in the Vietnam area, and back in the southwest China, and I began to see people that were completely no abnormal, and they would disturb the meetings, and something would rise up in me and say, you come out of that person and see them instantly set free by God's power, instantly set free by God's power. Then I couldn't have my meetings disturbed and broken up. I mean, I might as well stay home if I don't know how to run a meeting, you see. And, and, and so through persevering, and reaching out to set people free, this ministry fell upon me. And because I learned so much about it in so many nations of the world, uh, they wanted to call me an exorcist, you see. And, and uh, some people were almost afraid of me, you know, uh, for the simple reason that we had caused spirits to come out of people. And we didn't, we didn't want that name and we didn't want that relationship. I, I didn't. And, and God said, but you must teach others how to set people free. They, they, will, never, they will never see the jungles of Indonesia that, you have, that you've gone through and the little villages high in the steaming hills of Java. They won't see those. Neither will they see these rustic villages in the top of Tibet. But says you're going to have to help them to know that they can set people free. So actually, uh, we're here tonight not of my own will. And I would rather... I give you some nice, gentle Jesus stories. We could both go home happy. But then what would do when you come up against the evil one and you didn't know how to handle the situation? Then, then, then you would possibly be defeated in your Christian experience. And what we want you to know is Christ is the answer. Can you say amen? I can't forget that 
uh, I was preaching up in Minnesota. And uh, after I had finished preaching, uh, a clergyman walked down the middle aisle. Uh, it was a, uh, a Lutheran minister. I didn't know what he wanted because I hadn't invited anybody to come down the aisle. So I waited till he got down there to see what he wanted, and I saw tears in his eyes. He said, I've heard what you said about casting out devils. He said, I have put two of my membership in the insane asylum. He says, I'm going to go get them out. And <laughs> I saw grim determination back of that face. I said, yes, you can do that. Go get them out. I said, only one thing I want you to do. I want you to telephone me and tell me. Ten days later, I got a telephone call. He said, I went to the insane asylum. I cast the devil out of them, and they're both back home, and they're normal today. <laughs> now, that simply means that if you're not trained, you know, if you don't have understanding, then you're not capable of doing a thing. Uh, ignorance cannot be very helpful. Uh, you you got to know something. And so these lessons are to train ourselves to set humanity free. But I must say, you must, you'll have to have a compassion for it first. And, and, and if you're going to have a streak of fear down your backbone, well, you go sit in the corner with the pussycats. Uh, you better leave the warfare to somebody else because we're out there in grime and grisly warfare. We're, we're trying to get people to heaven. We're trying to destroy the works of the devil. And we're not going to slow down and we're not going to stop. We're going to say Christ is the victor every time Amen. in Jesus' name. And your present lesson is, is witchcraft an alien entity. Now, we know that you would immediately say yes and for sure, but there are, but there are others who don't know yet. They're all involved in witchcraft and they say it's good. There are people in high places in this country that play with witchcraft and crystal balls and, 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 and uh, all kinds of strange things, saying it's good and it's all right. They don't understand. In 1 John 4 and 1, it says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God. Many false prophets are gone out into the world. Uh, when you meet a person, you must see what, what source, you know, that they're functioning from. Uh, from the source of God or the source of the devil. So he says, try the spirits. You say, how would you do that? Well, that's, that's very, very simple. Anything you did of a spiritual nature, if they were not of God, they wouldn't like it. They, they, they just wouldn't like it. And, and so you could, you know, trouble uh, trying the spirits. And a very simple way is, say, do you believe the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, can cleanse a man of all sin? And there's not a spiritualist in the world that'll like that. He'll tell you right now, he don't believe it. He don't believe it. Uh, sometimes you get out there and you don't have to do anything. I was traveling on one of these great big airplanes across the country between Chicago and the West Coast, and as usual, I just took out my work, like this work here, and began to work on it there in my seat. And, and I, I, I just happened to look up, and a woman sitting across the aisle, and she just stuck her tongue out at me. <laughs> and well, I could discern that spirit quite easy, you know, leave her alone. You better believe it. Uh, you, you see, that wasn't difficult to discern that spirit. Well, as you walk through life, you're not going to find it particularly difficult to know the spirit that belongs to the devil and the spirit that belongs to God. Can you say amen? amen. If we speak of witchcraft, what is it? It is defined as knowledge beyond normal human understanding. That's what witchcraft is. That witchcraft deals with the information which is concealed from the view of the average human. Witchcraft is secretive and flourishes on that which is mysterious. There are two sources of information for you. There, there are only two sources which can reveal hidden information or knowledge of a spiritual nature. One of these is God as described in the Bible in the gift of the word of knowledge and the gift of the word, uh, of, the word of wisdom and in the discerning of spirits. And those three great and mighty gifts of the spirit, uh, you, you, you will find sources of information beyond your ears, beyond your eyes, beyond your touch. And the other source, and the only other source, is the devil, or Satan, uh, who, who constantly works in opposition to God, and everything he does is to tear down God. He don't do anything unless it's to tear God down. His business is to tear God down. And if you got God in you, then that means to tear you down. The remarkable and amazing thing to me is that when a human person is experiencing a spiritual vacuum that's emptiness, he will normally seek out one of these two powers to guide him. Therefore, witchcraft is primarily 
religious in nature because human beings are seeking out something supernatural. Some seek to discover themselves through witchcraft and, and to fill a void in their own lives. Some seek to discover God through witchcraft to find out the, the, the mighty God. Some seek to find their dead loved ones in, in witchcraft. However, God can only be found in one, in one place. In John 14 and 6, Jesus said unto them, I am the way and the truth and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me. So, until you find Jesus, you can't find the Father. Did everybody hear that? Amen. Until you find Jesus, you cannot find the Father. Because you cannot come unto the Father but by me. He says, I am the door, and if any man enter in, you know, he must come through that door. Christ is the door to heaven, the door to God, the door of spiritual knowledge, and we can only come through that means. A Christian person should never seek supernatural guidance through any means other than the Bible, through prayer, and in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Isaiah 8 and 19, it says, And when they shall say unto you, Seek unto them that have familiar spirits, and unto wizards that peep and mutter, should not a people seek unto their God for the living, for the living to the dead? If you're wanting to know something about, about the living, you don't have to ask the dead about it. And if a person's dead, you don't have to ask the dead about the living. They don't know anything about it whatsoever. That if you're going to go to those sources, you're going to have to find it through familiar spirits, or wizards, and, and that peep and mutter. And, and uh, God says, shouldn't the people, shouldn't the people go to God for this? Shouldn't the people seek the Lord for it? In this very church, one of our young ladies was in a Bible school, a uh, full gospel Bible school. And she and some of the other girls had gotten themselves a Ouija board. And they were having a rare good time. In, in, the, in, the, in the nighttime, they would talk to the Ouija board. Who am I going to marry? Uh, what, what, what would be his size? Uh, what color would it be his hair? Uh, what kind of eyes would he have? Uh, will we get along good together? And they were having a great time talking to the Ouija board. And finally, one of them said, let's talk to the Ouija board and ask him who it is. So they said, who is it that's talking to us? And the answer came back, Satan. And that room became so full of evil till that young girl grabbed her telephone. She called right here to one of the members of this church and said, pray for us quick. She says, our room here is full of the devil. Are you here or not? Amen. All right. You play with the devil and you get all you can stand of it. And if you don't believe the things I say, there's a good way to find out. But I don't say that you can never come back. Sometimes the devil gets a hold of you and he won't turn her loose and you don't know how to get loose from him. The best thing is, is to leave him alone. Amen. Leave him alone. All right. Witchcraft forever hides its true identity. If I could just take you to Java, where the witch doctor rides on the bus with you, he's a god. You've never seen adoration like he gets. The, the, those people hand him anything and everything they've got. He just sits there like a god. Then the bus stops. And he gets off, and the whole town swarms around him. You've never seen adoration like they give to the witch doctor because he's got something supernatural. Did you know there are more witch doctors in that country than there are fit medical doctors? And that if a person gets in a problem in their home, they immediately go to the witch doctor and put a curse against them and kill them. And so they've got curses and counter curses working all the time. The devil working against the devil. Isn't that a mess? But the devil never wants you to know his true identity. Witchcraft will hide its true identity. Witchcraft seeks to hide behind the door in the powers of darkness. When people have discovered to their horror and dismay that Satan is the source of their information and that his guidance 
is demonic. They are often depressed, sometimes filled with fear, and don't know what to do. They're people that get under the clutches of the devil and don't know what they're getting into until they're in it. Then they don't know how to get out of it. Sometimes you spend five years getting into a thing and you expect the preacher to get you out in five minutes. Are you here? Yes. Taking you five years to get in and you want somebody to jerk you out in five minutes. Sometimes it takes a cleansing period and a cleaning period to go back on the inside of you and get some readjustments made inside of you and get some, some things made right with God saying, hey God, I'm sorry I got myself in this kind of a mess before you're set free. If you know it, say amen. amen. In Deuteronomy 29 and 17, 27, when God was talking to his people, he says, and the anger of the Lord, which is Jehovah, was kindled against this land to bring upon it all the curses that are written in this book. And the reason for it was their witchcraft. The reason for it was their witchcraft. The Bible forbids any occult, any occult activity in any of his people Witchcraft, because it leads to idolatry, and idolatry leads you to the devil. It isn't God's jealous of anybody. He's telling you where it will lead you. In Exodus 20 and 3, in the Ten Commandments, he says, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. No other gods before me. Because the Bible says the gods of the heathen are devils. So he don't want the devils before him. They're fallen angels that fell out of his presence. He knows where they all came from. And so therefore he doesn't want them in his presence whatsoever. In 1 Corinthians 10 and 20, he says, But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God, and I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. Now, uh, that is one of the strongest verses uh, in, in the Bible. And if you belong to some denominational church, you might take that scripture and ask your pastor if he'd give you a good explanation of it. See what he could tell you about it. But I say that the things which the word Gentiles means nations, just means sinners. Uh, they, they, they sacrifice to devils, that those idols are not just idols, you see, and not to God, and I would not that ye have fellowship with devils. And so that, that stands forever from the heart of the Lord Jesus Christ, from the Holy Spirit. Seeking assistance from witchcraft is calling upon another God. Whether you're trying to talk to your dead loved ones, or whether you're trying to find out something about next year or whatever you might be trying to find out that doesn't belong to you. It is insulting to God. It is insulting to God. God says in, in Deuteronomy 18 and 9, When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. Look what the next verse says. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or daughter to pass through the fire. The pagans would offer their children to gods and, 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 and burn them. In, in the fire. He says, you shan't do that. You shall not worship by giving a, a demon, a demon spirit your firstborn. You shall not do that. Or that uses divination, or that is an observer of the times, or that is an enchanter, or that is a witch. And the next verse is 11. Or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits. He's got them all down. Or with a wizard, or with a necromancer. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. Now, there are people in our city here that would not like that verse at all. And, and they, they, they say, oh, we, we can contact you with the dead, and we can give you supernatural utterance, and we can do this and that and the other. And God says they're nothing but an abomination. God says they are a real abomination. God says they are an absolute abomination. That means they cannot go to heaven. No abominable thing can go to heaven. They cannot, until they get rid of it, he cannot. But listen to what he says here. For all that do these things are an abomination to God, to the Lord, because of the abomination, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that? Nations lose their land because of witchcraft. God permits other nations to overwhelm them to carry them away in slavery and bondage because of witchcraft. So few people have, have, have really the proper uh, knowledge of how God really feels about alien entities. They, you know, they just haven't felt the anger of God toward them. They've taken God's place. 
They're gods, you see. And he said, wait a minute here. No, no, I, I would never, I would never let you worship a demon and then think you're worshiping me. Go to a, a spiritist class on Saturday night and, and go into a seance there and communicate with the dead, which is, <coughs> which is demon spirits, and come on Sunday morning and, and sing, sing what a friend we have in Jesus. You don't have one in Jesus. All right, because of spiritual contaminations by demon power, God says in Exodus 22 and 18, thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. Uh, you can say, oh, I am so glad we live in grace. Yeah, you might be living in grace, but I want you to know at the end of this dispensation, at the great white throne judgment, every sinner in history is going to be judged. And everyone that has broken the laws of God and has not received forgiveness will have an eternity in hell. And you know your judges, either one, will have anything to do with it at all. And a few stupid people run around with little signboards that be nice to the criminals and don't, and don't make them suffer. Are you here or not? Amen. It's amazing that God, telling us in John 3, 16, that he loved the whole world and gave his son to save the world, also meets out capital punishment to witches, sorcerers, wizards, and when you read the Bible, to all the other sinners. You say, why, Brother Sumrall? Well, God is angry at witchcraft because it challenges him in every form. It's a challenge to the Most High. It's his only challenge in the earth, really. <laughs> it seems to be like God. In Isaiah 47 and 13, it says, Thou art wearied in the multitude of thy counsels. Let now the astrologers the stargazers, the monthly pronosticators, you'd think this was written last week, wouldn't you? Isn't that something? The monthly pronosticators, let them stand up and save you from those things that shall come upon thee. Now, what a challenge coming out of the heart of God that if you're going to go to witchcraft and if you're going to go to all kinds of people that can give you a manipulation of the times and and, and and you're going to read the stars, and you're going to follow astrology. Well, he calls astrologers right there. He says, then let them save you. You see, astrology is not new. It's, it's, it's been there a long time. I, I've never been able to understand it, how you think a, 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 dead, a dead piece of star hanging up there it could ever influence your life. And it did. It's a dead talking to the dead, as far as I can see. Are you here or not? Amen. How <laughs> glad we are that God gives strength and power for us to set people free. Amen. Now, let me show you something. This is point number eight. The history of empires teaches us that witchcraft forms a web of occultism around the victim and will never let loose unless they are emancipated by God's power. We'll never let loose, never let loose. Witchcraft can be so subtle. You can seek to commune with the spirit world through home games. I wouldn't want to just ask you right now, how many got a home game that in some way or another will help you to communicate, you know, if you've got your dragons over there at your house and, 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 and uh, all this bunch of bu baloney, is that word all right? <laughs> that you can commune with the spirit world through home games unexpectedly because of a, a victim of oppression or possession. Sometimes persons' activities in witchcraft happened many years ago. And, and, then, and then it curses, comes to, com comes to light in the later years. It's, my goodness, I'm sorry I ever had that mess. This is, this is true of the Ouija boards, automatic writing, crystal balls, voodoo, yoga meditation, fetishes, fortune telling, and so forth. The victim slowly begins to understand his bondage by a spirit of gloominess, unexpected depressions, uncontrollable passions, tantrums, obsessions out of character with their own real person. Then, then can come resentments, delusions, compulsive lying, threats of self-destruction, and now the devil has a strong hold upon that person. It's, it's amazing. I met some who had terrible feelings about the blood of Christ 
that say, I, I like church if they don't talk about the blood of Jesus. Or against the Bible, against the Holy Spirit. Some people, such people as they do these things, cannot respond to medical treatment. They cannot respond to psychology. They do not respond to anything. They can't respond to prayer. But beyond the witchcraft, there's an alien entity. It is hidden information, hidden knowledge, and it's a wrong and it's a lie. Man is only attracted to it by a glamour and a, and a supernaturalism that does not come from God. It comes from the devil. In Ephesians 6 and 11, it says, put on the whole armor of God, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in, in high places. We answer all witchcraft in 1 John 4 and 4. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Let us read that together, please. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. <laughs> Glory be to God. Glory be to God. There is no, there is no negative power. There is no satanic entity that exists you know, but what they can be cast out of a human person. Just tell the devil we said so. There isn't any such thing. A Christian can defeat, expel, cast out any alien entity. If the person that has it wants to be free, they can be free. And the last words Jesus ever spoke on the face of this earth in Mark 16, verse 17, when he said, These signs shall follow them that believe in my name shall they cast out devils, and they shall speak with new tongues. Now, that was not spoken uh, to uh, any particular people. That was not spoken to ministers. Uh, that was not spoken to uh, priests. That was spoken to laity. They that believe, you have a right to do it. You have a right to set people free. You have a right to set people free. Amen. Yeah. You don't need to find a person in need and say, oh, I'll, I'll send you to my pastor. You don't need to do that. You can do it. God's ministers all over this nation can do it. And we want you to be free by the blood of Jesus Christ. I hope that you've been enlightened by today's teaching series by my father, Dr. Lester Sumrall. So many people have been blessed by his teachings on God's Word. If you are one of those people, I would love to hear from you. Write me at the address on the screen. I am Peter Sumrall, and thank you for watching and supporting LaCie Broadcasting.